Hey guys, so today we have another talking you out of buying new makeup releases. I did one of these a while back. I think it's been a few months now, but I got a ton of requests to do another one. So I definitely want to make this like a recurring series. And I asked you recently over on my YouTube community tab to share any new launches that you need a little help being talked out of buying. I'm really good at coming up with reasons not to buy things, almost to a fault sometimes. Like I remember a long time ago, this was like years ago, I was shopping with a friend at Target. We were just like looking at clothes and I kept picking things up and then putting them back. <laughs> And she uh, to the point where eventually she got kind of kind of annoyed at me. And she was like you talk yourself out of buying everything And I was like, I guess I kind of do sometimes I'm very indecisive when I'm shopping to the point where I just give up and I don't buy anything Which I guess is better than the opposite, but I'm good at like reasoning my way out of buying things So I figured maybe I would use that to help you guys out as well So if you're on either a no buy or a low buy or maybe these are products that you're that you've been tempted to purchase Hopefully I can give you like some other things to think about to maybe skip these products if that's what you want to do. So I definitely want to say like if you've already bought some of these things or if you are planning on buying them you don't want to be talked out of buying them then definitely don't take anything that I'm saying personally. Really what I'm directing my advice towards is the people who want to be talked out of these products. One of these things is actually something I already own and love but I'm still going to give you some reasons why you might not want to buy it. And then another one of these things is something that I'm already planning on buying. I've already made up my mind, but I'm still going to give you some reasons against purchasing it. So let's go ahead and start with the thing that I myself am already planning on purchasing. This actually launches tomorrow, which I think is today, the day you're watching this. I think this is going up on the 14th, which is Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day, by the way. So these are the new Odin's Eye collab palettes. Quite a few people asked me to talk about buying these. So Odin's Eye is coming out with three new eyeshadow palettes in collaboration with three different creators, Lauren May Beauty, Batty Bean, and Makeup Just For Fun. All three of these palettes are stunning, by the way, and huge congrats to all three of these creators. I'm already planning on buying the Lauren May Beauty Sea Talk palette, mainly because I am a huge Lauren May Beauty fan. I do love her channel so much, and I've been watching her for years, so I just, I, I really want to support her, but also, I love the colors that she picked out. I think that this palette is perfect. It's very Lauren, like if you know her, these are totally her kind of colors. And I just think it's a very well-balanced palette. I like that it has a mix of neutrals and colorful shades. I'm, I'm not trying to give too many reasons in favor of purchasing it because obviously you want to be talked out of it, but I am going to be buying this palette, full disclosure. I love it so much, but I definitely still have some talking points against buying it if that's what you want to do. So first of all, in regards to influencer collabs, it can be very tempting to purchase a collab product, especially if that's a creator that you love, you feel like you've um, really developed a almost a relationship with that creator, parasocial relationship, whatever. Like, If you have been supporting that person for a long time, it can be really tempting to show your support by buying that palette. You almost feel like you kind of have to in order to be like a, a true fan of that person. But I just want to say, even if you are a huge fan of any of these creators or all three of them, you don't have to purchase their palette to show your support. There's so many free ways that you can support a creator. Of course, all the things that we already know, like subscribing, hitting the thumbs up, it seems really simple, but hitting the thumbs up, just engaging with these creators' content is a great way of showing your support. Commenting on their videos, watching their videos all the way through to the end, all of those things, following them on the other platforms that they're on, those are all great and free ways of supporting their career. So you really don't have to make a purchase just to feel like you're really a true fan and supporter of these creators. Um, and I'm sure that they feel the same way. But I think the boat a lot of people are in is not only do you like and want to support the creators, but you also really like the palettes that they came out with. I mean, all three of these palettes are stunning. I definitely think for me, Lauren's color story is the one I'm most drawn to, but the other two are both stunning as well and you know they're very unique and the packaging is beautiful you know there's a lot of other things that you might feel tempted by other than just because you like the creator if i myself were talking myself out of buying the lauren may beauty palette here's what my reasoning would be so number one i know i don't wear bright yellow green colors very often and the times that i have had those colors in my collection it's been kind of hit or miss in terms of whether or not i like the way that color looked on my eyes it really seems to depend a lot on the undertone and just the specific depth of the shade when it comes to those kind of chartreuse yellow green sort of colors so i'm not 100 percent sure that i'm going to like the way that specific one looks on my eyes 
So that's one thing, you know, it could go one way or the other. I might love it or I might not. So there's that. And then similarly, I'm also very particular about copper shades. That copper, what is it called? Um, the shade that's called, I think it's called Sunken Treasure. It's hard to tell for sure how I'm going to like that shade on my eyes also. Sometimes I find copper shades that they're a little bit too, like almost yellowy. I feel like they just don't quite look right on my skin tone. It looks like this one has a little bit more of a red undertone to it rather than like a yellowy undertone. So I'm thinking I probably will like it, but there's a chance I won't like the way that color looks on my skin tone either. So that's two shades out of 10 that I may or may not end up liking. So for you, maybe it's not those two shades, but maybe you feel that way about some of the other shades in the palette. Like maybe, you know, you don't really love the way pink looks on your eyes. There's a very pink shimmer in here. Are you sure you're going to like that shade? And then the other thing to think about is those four shades on the left, the like the two taupes and then the two kind of warm browns, those are very neutral colors that a lot of us probably have in other palettes as well. You could probably find similar shades in your collection. So that's another thing to think about. Do you really want to buy a palette where four out of the ten shades, like 40% of the palette, are shades that you already probably own. So that's another thing to keep in mind and really I would just say with any of these palettes, I'm using the Lauren palette as an example because that's the one that I'm gonna buy, <laughs> any of these palettes that you're tempted by, really look at each shade individually and think about, first of all, do you already own that shade in other palettes? And if so, how often do you use it? Is it a shade that you kind of skip over a lot of the time? If like half of these shades are shades that you already own and they're not really shades that you tend to get a lot of use out of, that's probably a good sign that you could skip this palette because if you're not already using those shades in other palettes, what makes you think you're going to use them in this palette? The Makeup Just For Fun palette from Amanda is also beautiful. I'm loving this like soft purple and green sort of vibe. But you know, for me with this one, I already know I don't really tend to like olive greens on my eyes. And this does have a couple of really olivey tones. Even though I love the way they look in the palette, there's a good chance I'm not going to like the way those look on my eyes. I have some other olive greens and sometimes they're fun to play with when I'm doing like really grungy fall looks, but I just don't tend to reach into those shades very often. I also don't really wear purple eyeshadow that often and I have plenty of purples already in my collection, so that's another like one third of the palette that I know is not really going to get a lot of use from me. I do really like what she did here though with, you know, she picked colorful shades but they're all very muted and kind of like a bit of a more wearable take on a colorful palette and I think it's beautiful but I definitely think this is one that I can skip and hopefully by me sharing my thought process as to why I would skip this palette maybe that can help you also skip it if that's what you're trying to do. And then the Batty Bean palette. This one is so fun. I love all the bright colors that she chose. Um, this one again would be an easy skip for me personally because I don't wear really bright colors very often and when I do want to wear really bright colors, I already have several really rich, colorful palettes in my collection to choose from. So I feel like I already have all my bases covered in terms of these kind of bright rainbow sort of colors. So hopefully that helps give you some reasons to skip these palettes if that's what you are trying to do. But like I said, huge congrats to all three of those creators for coming out with some really fun and really unique palettes. I think they did a great job and I'm excited to try the Lauren May Beauty one. So the next palette that was requested that I talk you out of was the new Nomad Verona palette and I do own this palette. This was sent to me in PR. I gave it a really good review because I, I really do like this palette but I still have some things that I could say to maybe push you in the other direction if you are wanting to skip this palette. So for one thing this palette is $47. When I was sent this, I wasn't sure what the price would be. Most of their 18 pans are actually $44, so that's how much I thought it was going to be. I mean, it's only $3 more than what I thought, but to me, $47 seems a lot higher than $43. It is a lot closer to closer to $50. To me, $47 seems a bit steep. Like, I wouldn't pay $47 for this, so even though I really like the palette, I, I think that seems a little high. Um, another couple things to keep in mind that may or may not be pros or cons to you, but for one, make sure that you're not wanting to buy this palette mainly for just one of the sides. This palette really has two very different sides to it. This very like pink and red side and then the more smoky, cool toned, purpley, blue sort of side. 
Definitely ask yourself if you are mainly feeling drawn to this palette just for one half of it because if that's the case for you then I definitely think you should skip this palette because you really don't want to buy a palette that you're only really going to use one half of it, especially if it's a $50 palette basically. Another thing to think about here with this um, pink side, there's a little bit of overlap here between some of the shades. The shade Balcony and Rose, both of those matte pinks, I mean you can see they're not identical but they're similar. They're definitely very similar. They're both gonna look hot pink once they're on your eyes. And then Light and Love, those two reds. This one's a little bit more coral. This one's more of like a true red. Especially if you don't wear pinks and reds very often, that whole side might just end up feeling a little bit redundant, maybe not super useful for you. So that's another thing to consider. Another thing to consider that for me isn't a problem, but it might be for some people, the shimmers in here are a def definitely a very different texture from other formulas. If you're someone that likes very like soft, almost creamy feeling shimmer shadows, these are a little bit different. So these are very like hard pressed shimmers, which is kind of nice because you really don't get any fallout with these shimmers. Some shimmers are like almost too flaky that you're almost always going to get fallout. These are very like sparkly shimmers, but they're also not super messy. So there's that. But if you prefer to be able to apply your shimmers with a brush, you're probably not gonna like these because they don't pick up well on a brush. I like to apply them with a finger, which is how I normally apply shimmers anyway, so it's not a problem to me, but if you would like to be able to apply them with a brush, that's not really gonna be possible unless unless you wet your brush, then that might work better. So that's another thing that might deter some people. Another thing is just that these bright colors that you see here, they are very vibrant and intense on the eyes which may or may not be a good thing to you. If you prefer more muted, soft, kind of more everyday colors, um, I'm gonna tell you right now, you're probably not gonna get much use out of this side at all <laughs> because this side, most of these colors go on the eyes like practically neon, like they are very, very bright. I know that's not gonna apply to everybody. Some people like really bright colors, but you know, if most of the looks that you do are more like neutral, kind of soft, subtle looks, go ahead and skip this palette because it is very dramatic. Another thing to think about, if you are really conscious of how much space things take up, it's kind of a big palette. I mean, it is an 18 pan palette, so I would expect it to be pretty big, but just to compare it to another 18 pan, this e.l.f. 18 pan, the Nomad one, you can see, is much bigger, even though it has the same exact number of shades. So that's another thing to think about. If you, you know, don't like for things to be overly big and bulky, it is kind of a large, it has a large surface area. So hopefully that helped talk to you out of this palette if you were thinking about it. Okay, another sort of Valentine's Day makeup release that's launching on Valentine's Day is the Glam Light Chucky Collection. I have not watched this show, so I'm not super familiar, but one person did ask me to talk you out of it. So here we go, let me give it a try. So I think the main, like the main attraction of this collection is the eyeshadow palette. Normally that's what collections kind of center around. This palette, you know, looking at it, it does look kind of different. It looks a little bit unique from what we normally see coming out. It is definitely a very dark leaning palette. A lot of deep shades in here. The first thing I noticed about this palette is that it has, it actually has three black shades. A matte black, a matte black with glitter, which is one of my least favorite types of shades, and kind of more of like a shimmery, deep charcoal black sort of color. Now, maybe you're somebody that wears black eyeshadow all the time and you think those three shades are super useful. I would venture a guess that most of us probably don't wear black eyeshadow that often. And if you do, really just one matte black, I think, is enough. <laughs> maybe a matte black and that shimmery kind of charcoal color also looks pretty, but the fact that there's also a matte black with glitter in it, it feels like a wasted shade right there. Like they could have put something else. They could have put maybe like a deep navy right there or just anything, anything else. So really that right there is reason enough to talk me out of it because I just think that seems like such a waste. Just like I was saying with the Influencer Collab palettes, if the only reason you want to buy this palette is because you're a fan of Chucky, if that's the only reason you're wanting to buy this, that's not a good enough reason. Now, let's say you want to buy it not only because you like the show, but also because you like the colors, you think it looks really unique and fun. I mean, I will give Glam Light this. I do think this is a really 
different sort of color story, especially for Valentine's Day. You know, this time of year we're mostly seeing bright pinks and lighter rosy tones. So it's kind of nice to see something different. And I think that's why a lot of people might have been tempted by this palette because it's not something you see launched every day. But if you don't wear these kinds of dark, deep tones, these deep plums and black shades and gray shades, burgundy shades. If you don't actually wear those types of shades, then just because this palette is unique is not really a good enough reason to buy it again. Because that's another thing I've noticed. I used to feel so tempted to buy things if they looked unique, which sometimes if it's good for something to be unique because I don't want to buy something that I already own like 10 of. But sometimes if something is unique to my collection, it's because that's something that I just don't really use. Whenever I see like an orange blush, I have to remember the time that I bought that e.l.f. cantaloupe blush and I bought it because it was unique. I didn't have anything else like it. But then I didn't end up wearing the blush at all because guess what? There was a reason why I didn't own anything else like it. It's just not a color that works on me. It just doesn't quite look right on me. So if you're wanting to buy this palette because it's different from what you already have, definitely be honest with yourself. Like, do you actually wear these really deep, grungy, vampy sort of tones on your eyes very often? Or is this the kind of palette that you're only gonna wanna wear a couple times a year? I would say if you're really tempted by this one, plan out a few looks that you think you would do with it. In a typical week, plan out some looks that you think that you would be comfortable wearing. If you can come up with five good looks that you would actually want to wear more than once, maybe this would be a good palette to purchase. But if you find yourself as you're planning out those looks that you're only really sticking to a select few shades, skip it. Just skip it. Don't buy it. There are a few other products in the collection, like there's a little handheld mirror. Looks like a, a blush. No. Oh yeah, a little like blush duo. Okay, this blush duo, not so like completely roasted or anything, but it's like a little duo with two heart-shaped pans. But just think about how it would be difficult to just fit a regular blush brush in those pans and actually get like an even coating of product. Also, those two blush colors look so similar. I kind of wish they would have just put one bigger heart-shaped pan in there. At least then like it would be a bigger pan and it would all just be one color instead of two colors that are virtually the same. <laughs> that just seems kind of silly. Next up we have the new Natasha Denona Love Face Palette. So first of all, I just had to point this out because it's so funny. I'm looking at the Trend Mood page right now and we have this palette and then two posts prior is the new LH Cosmetics. It looks like it's called the Blama Palette. Is that? That's what it says on Trend Mood. But I just had to point out that all five of the eyeshadow shades in the, the, the Natasha Denona Love face palette are dupable with this LH Cosmetics palette. So if you are planning on buying either of these products, definitely don't buy both because look at this. They both have a matte light pink. They both have a matte deep like plummy brown. They both have like a medium taupey shimmer. They both have a mid-toned matte magenta color. And they both have kind of a dusty rose sort of matte color. So really, I think what that shows is just there's only so many kind of Valentine's themed pinky palettes that can be done before they start to get a little redundant. And I think just the fact that there's those two basically right next to each other on the Trend Mood page is a testament to that. So another thing I was noticing with this Natasha Denona Love face palette, if you own any of the other Natasha, D D <laughs> it's so hard to say over and over again. If you own any of the other Natasha Denona love palettes from years prior, they all kind of have a similar vibe, you know? They all are kind of starting to look really similar. So really, the thing with face palettes, if you're tempted by this one, look into your collection. Do you own any other face palettes or like these combo face and eye sort of palettes? And if so, how often do you actually use them? Because I don't know about you, but for me, with any kind of either face palette or especially face and eye palette combined, there's just something about it that deters me from wanting to use it. I think, you know, I always end up defaulting to using my single blushes and highlighters, and I always forget about my face palettes, always. Now, I'm sure not everyone is that way, but I think a lot of people are that way just from what I've heard, so if that is you, then don't be fooled into thinking that this palette is going to be any different because most likely it's going to be the same as all the other face palettes that you own. 
You're gonna maybe use it a few times in the beginning and then it's gonna kind of get shoved into the back of your drawer. Another thing with face palettes or you know face and eye palettes like this is you know you might end up really loving the eyeshadows but maybe you don't like the way the highlighter looks on your skin. This highlighter shade looks very similar to a lot of other champagne toned highlighters. Maybe the formula is something totally special and unique, I'm not sure, but let's say you end up loving the eyeshadows but you don't really like the way the highlighter looks on your skin. Maybe the highlighter is too dark. It looks like it, you know, if you have really fair skin, this highlighter might be too dark on some skin tones. So, if that's the case, then even if you like the eyeshadows, the fact that you're that, that's basically like a third of this compact that you're not even dipping into. To me, that would be another thing that would keep me from wanting to reach for this palette because I'd almost feel like, you know, what's the point of bringing out this whole big palette if I'm only using part of it? Or the same thing goes for any of the other shades. Maybe you really like the face shades, but you don't like the eye shades. Also on Trend Mood, I don't know if this is a typo as well, but this is $74.60 in the caption. $74.60. That sounds like an odd price because usually they don't have... Usually it's just like a solid number, it wouldn't have like 60 cents on the end of it. That's not how Natasha Denona usually prices her products. So that can't be the price. But her other face palettes that are in this same format are $62, so I would guess that it's more around that price. Oh, another thing, if we're breaking down the price, so assuming this Love face palette is $62, keep in mind her mini 5 pan palettes are $27. If we subtract the cost of a five pan Natasha Denona palette, then if you're spending $27 on those five eyeshadows, then you're spending $35 on basically that face duo, the blush and the highlighter. So ask yourself, if those eyeshadows weren't in there, would you buy that face duo for $35? Do you actually want those face shades and the eyeshadows or are you mainly buying it just for the eyeshadows? Because if so, you could save a lot of money by just getting one of her five pan palettes instead. So just some food for thought there. Lots of different things to consider, especially when it comes to face palettes like this or face and eye palettes. If you're not truly buying it because you want every single shade in there, then I think that's a good reason to go ahead and save your $62. Okay, another thing that's been getting hyped up recently that one person requested that I talk about was the Rare Beauty highlighters, these new highlighters. First of all, I have to say I'm really happy that it seems like highlighters are making a comeback this year because for a while their highlighters just weren't really like the, the it product, but I still love highlighters, so I'm happy to see that the highlighters are in the spotlight again. Okay, the Rare Beauty highlighters, first of all, I, trust me, I'm tempted to. Every time I see these, I'm like, it's so pretty. Like, I'm just drooling over these because just the way they look in the packaging, Rare Beauty really does a great job with just the presentation of their products. Like the packaging is always so beautiful. It just looks like a really satisfying compact to hold. Like I like how it's rounded and the the highlighter itself looks so smooth in there. So I totally get it. This in fact, you know what? I just added this highlighter to my Sephora loves list. Well, first of all, good news is three out of the four shades of this highlighter are out of stock on Sephora right now. So there you go. You can't even buy it if you want to. But of course, eventually it will come back in stock. So what, definitely one thing to know, because all the reviews I've heard of this have said that it is a very intense highlighter. And I know a lot of people really don't like super blinding, kind of like see it from space sort of highlighters. If you like more subtle, kind of natural looking highlighters, it sounds like this would probably not be a good one for you because it's it sounds like it's a very intense highlighter. I mean, even just looking at the photos here on Sephora, it looks like a very intense highlighter. So if that's not your thing, then I think that's an easy reason to skip this. The other thing is, all four of the shades of this highlighter are definitely shades that have been done many times before by other brands. The shade that I'm most interested in is Exhilarate, but guess what? I already have so many of these kind of champagne golden sort of highlights. I'm panning one right now, the Becca Highlight in Champagne Pop. My Estate highlighter, honestly this looks kind of similar to the Rare Beauty highlighters, just different packaging. My Pixie highlighter in Subtle Sunrise has a champagne color in it, so I have so many champagne highlighters to play with that I already love. Do I really need another one? Is this Rare Beauty one really going to be that different? Maybe. <laughs> but probably not. There's only so many different highlighter formulas that can be done. And then, you know, then I'm thinking, well, I also kind of like this mesmerized shade, this more pink toned one. 
But once again, I already have a pink toned highlighter here in the Pixie Duo. Basically what I'm saying is if you already have a collection of powder highlighters, you probably already have these shades. So even though these look so pretty and also the fact that we haven't seen very many powder highlighters come out recently, that makes it seem even more unique and special. But really, you know, if you've been collecting makeup for a few years now, chances are you probably already have a good handful of highlighters in your collection. If you don't already have a handful of highlighters in your collection, maybe that's because you don't actually like highlighter that much. So especially if you're somebody that's kind of moved away from the really blinding highlighters and um, just powder highlighters in general, then there's nothing that this powder highlighter can do that's going to completely change how you feel about powder highlighters. <laughs> so those are just some reasons why you might want to skip these products if you're tempted but you really are trying not to purchase any new makeup right now or you just know that you don't need them even though you want them. Hopefully I was able to be kind of your voice of reason today if you are on a low buy or no buy or you just know you don't need any of these things and you need, just need a kind of a pep talk to steer clear of them. Hopefully this video helped you out. But thank you so much for hanging out today. I hope you had fun. If you did, be sure to give the video a thumbs up. Let me know if you would like me to continue doing these videos in the future. Also, if you want to support my channel, you can check out the Patreon or the channel membership where I upload bonus content every month. And otherwise, I hope you all have an amazing rest of your day and I will talk to you again very soon in my next video. Bye!